All right, so the notorious PLT, procedure linkage table, and this is the component that I'm basically saying has to do with the um, funky fresh function resolution, I guess, has to do with the equivalent of IAT. All right, so now we're going to, well, you don't have to do this, we're just going to follow through the thing. Back when I was talking about delay load, right, we said, let's say we have some program that calls the function once, it does a delay load import, and then it calls it the second time, and the second time it's filled in. So notion, so in your directory, there is a hello2.c, and you can compile it, but, um, but I'll just walk you through the picture. This is going to be the exact same sort of picture as we saw with delay load imports for Windows. So first of all, the first thing you need to know is that the printf turns into a put s. So that's a put string. It just is the behind the scenes thing that typically will implement uh, printf functionality. So the first thing that we have here, yep, so the PLT, I guess, looks like the stub and the got PLT is going to be the actual delay load import address table. So you're running along happily in your hello2. You hit the first printf, call put s at PLT. So the first time this call, this is, sorry, this is to uh, at and syntax assembly rather than Intel syntax. Linux uses at and syntax. Windows uses Intel syntax. So rather than the, the square brackets thing that I was showing you before, got uh, now these angle brackets. So call put us at PLT is going to be uh, calling down to here, this put us at PLT. So that is going to jump, and then this is the actual dereferencing. It's saying jump to the value at dot got dot plt plus 24. So first you're actually calling to the stub here, but then the stub is doing a jump and it's dereferencing the dot got dot plt plus 24. So the dot got dot plt plus 24 down here, I'm not putting absolute virtual addresses, I'm just putting, you know, relative things here. Maybe that's part of the problem. I tried to make this too interpreted. Anyways, this jump is basically saying take whatever is at dot got dot plt plus 24, pull that address out, and jump there. And so I'm saying that filled in there was the address of put s at plt plus 6. So it's actually the address of the next instruction is what it's jumping to. And the next, in, well, let's keep walking. So it's pulling a value out of the table and it's jumping there. Turns out at the beginning, when we're still dealing with stub code, before it's had a chance to fill in this thing, right? We're, we're trying to work ourselves again towards a world where we fill that in with the real code, right? We really want to go up here to put s, but we first jump down here to the stub code. Stub code pulls from the entry, and to start with, it just goes to the next instruction. So what does the next instruction do? It pushes hex 10, and then it jumps to this other stub code up here. So the push hex 10 is kind of equivalent to the, um, to the pushing, the moving stuff in EAX that we saw before, but not quite. So it pushes hex 10, and then it jumps to DL stub, which is the common code. This is the hand wavy code is going to, you know, somewhere do, uh, you know, load libraries and things like that, kind of. But here, that hand wavy stuff is up in the dynamic linker. So, jump to DL stub, and we jump back to here. And so it's going to push a value of the PLT plus eight, and then it's going to jump to whatever value is inside of PLT, got PLT plus 16. So it's pushing the value of this, and it's jumping to whatever value is here. And so it pushes and then jumps, and it goes to this dynamic linker address, and that goes up here to, this is more of a, the hand wavy Dynamic linker does some stuff and eventually is going to fill in the table. And that stuff is the equivalent of load library and get proc address in order to look up the real address for puts. Because we want to put the real address for puts into this table so that the next time you call something that looks up from this table, it goes to the real puts. So dynamic linker finds the real address of puts, uses awesome animation to move it into the slot. And then the next time, okay, and then it calls, just like before with dynamic linking, it does hand wavy stuff, fills in the table, and then calls to the function you really wanted, because now it has its address. Then when that's done, it returns back, 
and you know it's going to return back to wherever it got called from in the first place. So you're running along again. You hit the second time that you're calling printf, and then this time you jump down to here, the puts plt, but this time the jump pulls from this got plt plus 24, and it this time goes directly. All right. So the first time around you run around through stub code and dynamic linking code. Second time around you go directly to where you want to go. But the thing is, this is the default on Linux, whereas on Windows, this is much less common, and you, know, you just see this occasionally. So any questions on this? It's really the same thing as we saw before, applied to Linux. You're saying it's more common on Linux, are you just saying that it's more common that people dynamically like Linux? Um, well, no, I mean, when I say it's more common on Linux, what I mean is like this is the default, right? Whereas on Windows, it's an option, but it's not the default. So if you're just default compiling on Windows, you've got this import address table that the OS loader fills in everything at the very beginning, and then it lets you run. So it takes longer to get started, but then you run faster after the fact. Whereas this, you start faster because you don't have to resolve all those import address table entries, but then it takes more time because every time you want to import something, you run a little bit of extra code and then you call the dynamic linker. Run a little extra code, then call the dynamic linker. After you resolve all of them, again, you just run just as fast because you're uh, you know, minus you know, one instruction of indirection to do right. that kind of thing. But yeah. All right. So we are not going to go into the uh, stepping through in the debugger. And I mean, we could do this and I could show you it going into the dynamic linker and stuff like that. But I don't think that's going to be important. I guess here's with some real addresses if I were actually stepping through, just to be clear about real addresses. Yes, and this is where I step, 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 step. All right. And I've got a little story going on with my things. What is that? Brutus, Brutus. Stillness of the air portends our duty. Ominous. All right. So I can show you the. Mm, do I have enough that I can do this? Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to show this, and it's pretty much time for a break, anyways. And then we're going to go back and talk about the virus lab and the hacking. So, but just as an FYI, there's an environment variable called ld bind now. And if you set that equal to one, it's basically going to tell the dynamic linker that you need to go ahead and do it more like the Windows way and resolve everything all up at the front. And then it's going to uh, just fill in all the import address table entries right at the beginning and then let you go ahead and run. And so, but this is just an optional uh, environment variable that you can set. And so I could show you this, but let's just believe me for now. Let's take our five minute break and we'll come back I'll show you packing with UPX on Linux, and then I'll show you packing with UPX on Windows, and then I'll show you the virus lab. And so the two packing things, they're going to show how you manipulate headers and how the things can uh, get benefit from that. And then the virus lab will show you how a particular type of code can like walk through metadata in order to go find load library and get proc address and stuff like that without ever having to use imports and stuff. So it's appropriate for using shell code, appropriate for using viruses and so forth. All right, and same thing. There can be PLT hooking the same way there's IAT hooking. Do the exact same thing. Attacker injects in the memory, overwrites PLT entries rather than IAT entries.